Hello everybody, Pinstripe here. What is going on? Welcome to my Hogs of War weapon tier list video. Today, going to be going over each individual item, weapon and ability in the entire game, including vehicle weapons as well, and giving them a rank between S or D. D being just pretty boring, not that great. S being just super duper amazing. Uh, depending on how well this video does, I may look at doing another one for individual maps. Uh, and I will, of course, be covering all of these weapons in their own individual videos in the future, where we can talk Talk about them in more detail uh, but do let me know your thoughts in the comments because of course this is just my own opinions on these weapons in terms of how reliable they are how fun they are and overall what i think about them uh, as a whole so we're going to kick things off with the bazooka which is of course the most iconic weapon in the entire game and i'm going to put it in the b category primarily because it is you know effective it's reliable it does its job a maximum of 40 damage on full maximum contact i suppose and yeah i don't know it's 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 not amazing but it's not terrible and it sits in the b category crazy first melee weapon is going to be the sword which i'm going to have to put in the a category it's not quite awesome uh, but it does do uh, the max damage you can do with a melee weapon, 25 damage, and it has some really good range. Of course, you do only use it when you get to the rank of hero or legend, but as a melee weapon, it is very effective. It's similar to that of the cattle prod, which I'm going to put in the B category. No, I'm not. I'm going to move it into the A category because it does pretty much the same thing. Uh, the max amount of damage, really good range, and one of the major melee weapons in fact these are the two major melee weapons you should be using at all times of course the cattle prods you can only use if you have a spy uh, and you can find them in multiplayer as well but overall those are the two kicking it off for the melee weapons now for a multiplayer only weapon of the grenade launcher we have discussed it before as to how it would work in single player if it would work in single player because the ai seem to use it quite a lot in multiplayer but i'm going to give it a c rank mainly because i don't know it does you know kind of low damage the same as a grenade but obviously it's a grenade launcher so 30 damage maximum but i very rarely use it in multiplayer and i don't really see it as being that fun to use uh, compared to the rocket launcher that would definitely have to go in the a category because you get some pretty hefty damage from it it is very effective and rather it is very effective and reliable against enemies, especially snipers and spies who are always hiding. Uh, I would give it an S rank, but I don't know. Does it deserve it? I'm not sure. One weapon that does deserve it, though, is the Super TNT, uh, which, of course, you get the maximum damage of 200. You can find it throughout the single player campaign. And overall, it is just a very effective weapon to use against both pigs and vehicles. Now, the grenade, like I said, is also going in the C category alongside the grenade launcher. I've come to appreciate it a bit more through going through the Grunt Squad challenge, uh, but it is fairly dull. It does 30 damage maximum, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a good introduction into the game for using projectiles that can roll, I guess, and kind of learning the physics of that. Uh, but overall, for me, it's just a bit boring. Unlike the Shockwave, which has to go in the A category, I would put it in S, but it's just so rare that you don't find it that often. Only the Legends have it in the entire game, but you can pickpocket from them, and you can also get it on one of the missions in multiplayer. I can't remember which one it is, but you can get it in a random crate, which is cool. Uh, obviously, it doesn't do that much damage. Uh, similar to the Shock Shell that you find in the Artillery, which is going to go in the D category. Again, that's just because it has low damage. I very rarely use it when I use the artillery, uh, but you can use it to blast pigs quite a long way into the air, but it doesn't always blast them off the map, not like the shockwave, which, like I said, is in the A category. Another D would have to be the hide ability, mainly because I never use it. I know it's effective, it can give you armor, but overall, I very rarely use it. I don't really see it as being that fun. i rather use my pig to deal more damage than hide and not deal any damage whatsoever. Uh, so that is my thoughts on the hide. Now, another artillery shell has to be the heavy one. That has to be an S for me because that's the first shell I go to so long as there are pigs within range of said shell. It does a maximum of 100 damage. The one pound shell definitely sits in the S rank there. So on to another fairly, you know, effective weapon, but one that uh, I'm questioning. Do I put it in B or C? I'm thinking B because, again, it's it's like the bazooka. It does its job. It's got 50 damage. It's effective. You can knock it in. 
you can knock pigs into water with it and other environmental factors as well. Uh, but I very rarely use it, to be honest, unless, of course, I am playing as a sapper or an engineer, mainly on hard mode as well. That's, that's a, a key for hard mode and, of course, for AI, who just love it. Next up, we have a pretty easy one, that of the suicide. You guys know my thoughts on this one quite well. It's just pointless. I mean, you get 50 damage from it. It's not like it's more than a TNT, which would normally sit alongside that of a sniper or a spy in their arsenal. They'd have a TNT and they'd have a suicide, which is unnecessary because losing a pig is such a huge thing in Hogs of War. You want to get that survival bonus as much as you can in the single player campaign. And the suicide just goes against that completely. It's kind of a last ditch attempt at dealing damage. Maybe to players who are quite new to the game uh, might find it fun because, I mean, blowing up two pigs at once is, is quite enjoyable on the, on the face of it. But in the long run, it definitely sits in the D category for me. One of the first gases has to be the freeze gas, which I'm going to put in the B category, uh, mainly because obviously tranquilizing a pig is always a, a big plus. You want to gain another turn as much as you can. Uh, but it is restricted to multiplayer, which is why it doesn't get a rank any higher than that. Uh, but I do enjoy using it as much as I can. The other gas, of course, Madness. I'm going to have to put it into the C category. It's quite fun to use. It's very, uh, <laughs> very silly. It's a very silly weapon that is, of course, only restricted to multiplayer as well. Um, it does 15 damage and using it against multiple pigs can be quite funny. Uh, but it doesn't always knock pigs off the map. They don't always run off the map because it depends on the direction that they're facing in when the gas uh, makes contact with them. Um, but yeah, I don't really use it as much as the poison gas, which is, I think, another one for me that's between C and B. I'm not entirely sure. I might just put it in C. No, actually, no, it's going to go in B. Again, it does its job well. If you damage a pig with it, uh, 15 damage on contact. And of course, they then lose 10 health per turn until they find some form of medical assistance. Uh, speaking of medical assistance, the self-heal is also going to sit in the C category, primarily because it's only used by the elite pigs of the hero and the legend. And again, it's only individual. It's not like you're healing teammates. Uh, and I try not to use it as much as I can, mainly because I prefer to use the medical darts, which I'm trying to find. Medical darts would have to be in the B category as well. Again, that is one of the other weapons you can use to actually heal teammates or yourself. So you get that sort of divide in the middle. Unlike the healing hands, which are solely for uh, other players, uh, the medical use them and dish out 20 health uh, per use with a maximum of three uses. So you can dish out 60 damage, uh, <laughs> 60 health, sorry, onto uh, any given target. But it sits in the B category as well because I mean, they're fairly equal, but I have to put the medical ball in the A rank, mainly because you can heal multiple targets with it. Or should I give it an S? It, it's fairly reliable. It does a max healing of 40. So you know what? I'm going to put it in the S category because I really like the medical ball. It's just so effective, especially uh, if you combine it with a super air burst for no apparent reason. <laughs> the super air burst, of course, does a max damage of 330, which is insane. And you can only find it in a single uh, multiplayer mission, that of uh, Mission 6. And I primarily use it on the snipers or the spies if you're playing on hard mode uh, to just destroy one of the snipers. Uh, so long as you can hit all of the, uh, the shells. Sometimes the shells, like the final burst of shells, doesn't always damage uh, the pig. So you can get unlucky sometimes. Uh, but for me, it's always a fun weapon to use and is very effective, similar to that of the air burst as well, which is gonna go in the A rank again. Only A because it doesn't do as much damage as the super air burst, but I really enjoy having that in my arsenal and using that as much as I can to deal damage alongside the mortar as well, which I'm, I'm gonna put in the B category because I don't know, it's, it's very tricky to use for people who've never really played the game or have never uh, spent some time just drilling themselves with the mortar that may sound a bit wrong but either way uh, it does do a max damage of 50 and uh, requires you to aim in the sky as much as possible basically uh, just watch my mortar video it's too much to get into right now but max damage of 50 can be effective especially if the ai are using it as well you can damage multiple pigs very similar to basically any other shell based weapon uh, but it sits in the B category for me because it's not quite amazing it's not quite terrible it's just very efficient 
so on to the heavy machine gun, which I'm questioning here. Do I put it in B or C? For me, it's not quite A. It does do 40 damage maximum, but I'm going to have to put it into the B category as well, I think. It does have a fairly good spread, similar to that of the standard machine gun, which I'll have to go in the C category because both of these heavy machine gun and the standard machine gun, they both have uh, a good range as well. Uh, obviously the heavy machine gun dealing 40 max and the standard doing 20. Uh, but if you can hit a single target multiple times, uh, depending on the angle, I guess they can also be damaged more than 20 as well with I think uh, four health lost per bullet. Uh, which is not too bad. Another one in the C category will have to be the standard rifle, uh, mainly because you can get a decent range with it, unlike uh, any other rifle-based weapon, or bullet-based weapon, I should say, similar to that of the pistol, um, which doesn't have a good range because the rifle is mainly uh, mid to long range and the pistol is uh, short to mid range. They both do 20 damage, but uh, the extra range for me really does it and puts it in the C category and puts it one above the pistol because most of the time as a heavy weapons dude, you should be using the bazooka or the mortar. So the pistol only comes into play as a last resort for me. Unlike the melee weapon that's used by the heavy weapons, which is the trotter, which has to go in the D category. It just doesn't have the range. Sometimes you can, you know, use it to knock people off uh high places into water or minefields but normally uh, i very rarely use it uh so it's not that fun for me similar to that to the uh sleep as well or the skip ability i don't normally use it unless i'm sat in a vehicle or i'm you know biding my time but very rarely do i use it similar to that of the hide as well kind of comes into that same category of i just don't use it enough uh, unlike the mine, which will have to sit in the B category, again, you know, you can use it uh, to take down pigs that have low health, so you can guarantee yourself one kill per turn as an engineer or a sapper or a saboteur, and it just combines nicely with dealing damage to the espionage class if they're hiding, because you can use a mine to blow open the box, and then if you have a TNT, you can combine that well uh, and deal a max of 50 damage there. Uh, so the mine getting the B grade. The sniper rifle, I have to put it in the S grade because for me it is the best uh, long range weapon, uh, bullet based weapon in the entire game. And I really enjoy using it. I always have, it's always been fun. Sniping is fun in most games and it's surprising to find a turn based 3D strategy game where sniping is actually quite fun. Uh, the high explosive, or I should say the cluster bomb even, it looks quite similar to the high explosive grenade. Uh, will have to be in the A category for me. It's not quite S because I don't actually have as much fun with it. Um, mainly because you can sometimes mess up your shot uh, because you know you control the explosion of grenades in Hogs of War. So you can mess it up and I don't know, I just don't see it as fun as some of the weapons up here or the healing abilities as well. Uh, On to the rifle burst, which you do find in the single player campaign, but it is quite rare to come across until you get into multiplayer because the orderly has it uh, and they can use it as much as they really want to. I'm going to put it into the C category because for me, it is one of the most inaccurate rifles in Hogs of War. Uh, you have three shots with it, each shot doing 15 damage. So you can have a max of 45 damage. Uh, but normally the final shot will usually shoot itself or aim itself up uh, slightly higher than where you are actually aiming. So normally you'll be doing 30 damage if you're shooting from short to mid range and mid to long range. It is incredibly difficult to get any of your shots on target to be honest because I feel like it has a worse range compared to the standard rifle. But then again you are only firing one bullet. Either way. It sits in the C category. What do you think about these weapons so far, by the way? Because we're pretty much halfway through. Uh, we've got quite a few in the B category so far. Not really making my mind up. But we're going to move on to the Tranquilizer, which I'm going to have to move into the, oh, I don't know, A or S. Because S is, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to put it in the S category. It's similar, obviously, to the Freeze Gas because they both have the same effect of tranquilizing a pig, making them skip their turn. But I see it as being vitally important in the single player campaign and in multiplayer. And it's just really fun to use and annoy your opponent with because ultimately they lose a turn 
and it does use some good in the long run. We do use it quite a bit when playing multiplayer and when I do make videos. That's right, I'm, I'm looking at you, Caster, because those, those tranquilizer shots can be a real pain in the butt sometimes, but it is one of my favorite weapons uh, to use both in multiplayer and single player. Uh, the airstrike is one that will sit in the A category for me. It's not quite S, uh, mainly because I talked about you know not using it as much as you can during single player, because it's an easy one to go for. If you want some quick damage, if you want to damage multiple pigs at the same time, that's cool. But for me, it's just sort of an easy way, an easy, not quite cheap, but I don't know, because it's used by the elite pigs as well. It doesn't come around that often, so you don't normally manage to uh, shoot down an airship perhaps to randomly gift yourself an airstrike uh, but in the same manner as the airstrike I'm gonna have to put the fire airstrike or napalm into the C category again it's unreliable to me uh, in so many regards because sometimes the fire can hit you know multiple pigs and deal a tremendous amount of damage because it's like 25 damage per hit uh, but sometimes depending on the way that I angle uh, the bombs to be dropped or the terrain that may be in the way it just never ends up going well for me i never i'm never able to actually you know deal a huge amount of damage with it unless of course i'm using it on vehicles but that's quite rare uh both in multiplayer and in single player uh what is this one oh that is the uh the mine shell uh for the artillery which i'm gonna have to put in the c category as well uh, mainly because it's one of the ones I don't usually use similar to the napalm for the S no for the artillery That's one that I'm gonna have to put in the D category as well uh, Just because you know the, these two are ones that I very rarely use when I'm using an artillery uh, But in terms of weapons, I do use the most it would have to be uh, the standard Shell that does 60 damage. I can't remember the name of it. It does have a specific name But I'll put it in the A category because it comes up as being very helpful for me when I'm using the artillery Not as helpful as the one pound shell uh, But 60 damage is still a huge plus and it is you know, it has a good range as well uh, The guide missile has to be one of my favorite missile based weapons uh, It does a max of 75 damage and of course you can control the rocket which is pretty cool not as cool as uh Actually, no, the humming missile is not as cool as the guided missile, uh, but it is effective. It does do 40 damage, but I don't normally use it. Uh, even if it is during multiplayer, I'd rather get a guided missile than a homing missile because, I mean, you are guaranteed 40 damage, but it can be blocked sometimes. The shot from uh, the homing missile can, you know, bump into terrain or vehicles or just if anything's in the way of that straight arrow rocket, uh, it's not going to hit the target, so uh, it's not always that reliable. But personally, again, I don't really have that much fun using it. Unlike the high explosive grenade, which will have to go one rank higher, it could be used more uh, in the single player campaign, but at the same time, it can also be overpowered, similar to that of the cluster bomb. Uh, but I don't know. It has to sit in the B rank for me. It's not quite amazing, but it is, you know, quite effective. The Super Shotgun is one that will have to sit in the A rank for me. Again, it's not quite S because it is unreliable in some regards, uh, depending on your shot. Obviously, if you shoot a pig with it, it's going to blast them into the distance, and you can use it to blast pigs off the map in single player, and of course, wherever it may come about in multiplayer. Um, but it's not quite S, like I said, because of reliability issues. Uh, on to the flamethrower for the pillbox, and that's going to have to go in the D for me, just because it uh, it's never used. I, I never use it. If I jump into a pillbox, I'm going to use the heavy machine gun, which is going to sit in the same rank as the standard heavy machine gun, uh, just for the same reasons. You know, it has a pretty good range. It has uh, a good spread of bullets, and it does a max of 40 damage. It does what it says on the tin, and ultimately, it is pretty effective. Uh, the shrapnel grenade is one that works pretty well against vehicles, but again, I'm questioning C or B this time. Um, may maybe B, but I don't use it enough to be put into the B category. It has to be C for me. It's effective, it's efficient, but I don't know. It, it doesn't always bode well for me. You can sometimes get all of the pieces of shrapnel to sort of uh, collide with a pig, so you can do some crazy damage with it, but... 
I don't know, it's not always 100% amazing to me. So C grade for that one. Uh, the mortar for the tank, primarily the aqua tank, would have to go in the D category. Again, this is only because the initial explosion from the mortar only does 15 damage. Why? I have no idea, but it's just a terrible item to use. One of the worst ones in uh, all of multiplayer, to be honest. Uh, the roller grenade is one that is only specific to single player. So I'm going to have to put that in the C category only because it's quite rare. When it does come about, it is just a grenade. I don't know, it, it, it's not amazing to me. You have to throw it as well so you don't have as much range as you would have with a, a shell-based weapon. Uh, so it's kind of on the same level as the grenade launcher, I guess. Uh, Anti-pillbox mines are very fun to use. You can only find them in either multiplayer, which is very rare to be honest, and uh, single player where you can find them on Glacier Guns. Uh, because of their rarity, I'm gonna have to put them into the B category. That's not because of their rarity, that's because I find them really fun. <laughs> Whenever I've used them, even though I only ever use them on that single mission, it's really fun to blow up a pillbox and really fun to know that you have the power to take out 100 health with two mines, you know, it, I don't know. It's just really fun for me, just for the fun factor alone, it sits in the B category, which I know quite a few people are gonna disagree with, but hey, what can I say? Uh, the pickpocket ability will have to go in the A category, again, just for the sake of its functionality. You take weapons from another pig and you can use them to your advantage. Of course, it's mainly used by the espionage class, but you can find it in the multiplayer if you play on generated maps, that kind of thing. The jetpack is another one that will have to sit in the A category just for the sake of functionality again. It's quite fun to use and you can use it to damage uh, pigs with the explosion that falls down from the sky with a maximum of 20 damage, uh, which was always intended apparently by the devs uh, to be used as a weapon alongside being a functional way of traveling around the map. Uh, one that most of you will probably already know, the Special Ops will have to be in the D category, primarily because I just never use it, it's not fun, it's a waste of a turn as well, so ultimately, why would you use it? I don't know, we'll make a video on it one day, maybe, and we can like hash out all of my feelings towards the Special Ops, uh, but until then, we'll have to settle for the Shotgun, which is not as good as the Super Shotgun, so I'm going to have to put it into the... I'm going to have to put it in the C category only because it's uh, poor range because uh, you can get a max of 30 damage with it but the the shells or the, the, the shotgun shells just have a crazy spread and sometimes it can go horribly wrong and you can end up with like barely any damage being done on your target so it's quite a tricky weapon to get a hold of and to sort of learn how all of the shotgun shells can be blasted into a pig at any given angle. Uh, but onto the airburst for the tank, which will have to go into the, I'm gonna put in the A category because it's the first thing I go for. It, it sits on the same level as the standard airburst because it's the first thing I use if I jump into a tank. Obviously you only find them on uh, just desserts in single player. And of course you can find them throughout multiplayer. Uh, but if I'm talking specifically about a tank, it's the first thing I'm going to use. Uh, second to that, of course, is the bazooka from the tank, which will sit in the B category. One down from that, just because it's, you know, the secondary thing I use. It's effective. And of course, it's on the same level as the standard bazooka. Uh, next up is the poison shell for the artillery. I'm thinking the C category, which is being extended. Again, I don't really use it that often. If I'm going to... Uh, it doesn't have that good of a range, so you are kind of held back by that. But let's move on to the bayonet, which is another one for the D category. Primarily because it has terrible range, it does only 10 damage, and if you kill a pig with it, you kind of risk damaging yourself in the process. Uh, the final two, we have the knife, which will go one up in the C category, only because it has some decent range, it's better than the trotter, and the bayonet combined, or maybe on the same level as the trotter, but I find it more satisfying with the knife. I'm not really sure. Uh, but the final weapon is, of course, the flamethrower, which is also going to sit in the C category just because you can use it effectively against vehicles. It's a really good tool for that. It does only 30 damage, but you can use it to inflict more damage on 
pigs if you hit them multiple times. Uh, but that, everybody, is my tier list. So the only top, what, seven that made it are the Super TNT, the One Pound Shell, Medical Balls, Super Airburst, Sniper Rifle, Tranquilizer, and Guided Missile. If you have any thoughts, feelings, or opinions on what I have said about these weapons, let me know in the comments. I'm sure there'll be plenty to disagree about, but uh, in the meantime, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, let me know your thoughts, and I will catch you all later for the next one.